Hello everyone, how are you doing? And it's been a while since I last uploaded, but I thought, you know, I've been very busy and I was unable to uh, upload a video in quite a while and I am very sorry for that. And also I am sorry if I wasn't able to get back to you, uh, to all of your replies, please forgive me, but uh, I am very busy at the moment. But regardless, I decided to make a video of uh, the mapping, genetic mapping of ancient and modern Iranian population. So I hope you enjoy my video. So in case any of you didn't know what a PCA is, a principal uh, component analysis, it basically maps out uh, modern populations uh, based on uh, their genetic affinities and where they are placed in comparison to ancient uh, populations. It basically works along a grid system devised by, devised by modern day scientists and it's really cool, well, biologists as well as uh, those studying genetics and I think uh, you will understand once I have explained the chart when once I get into it so here it is uh, this is the uh, PCA component analysis for modern uh, Eurasian population so it doesn't include East Asians but it includes uh, Europeans uh, South Asian Central Asians um, Iranians, West Asians, uh, Semitic populations, uh, Levantine populations, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. I hope I, I'll get into it uh, right now, don't worry. So basically, uh, it doesn't include, uh, sorry, I didn't clarify, it doesn't include East Asian or Southeast Asian populations because they are too genetically distinct from uh, Eurasian, like West Eurasian population. So uh, like South Asian, Central Asians, as well as uh, Iranian, Semitic populations, Europeans, and uh, North Africans as well. Sorry, I didn't mean uh, North Africans, I meant uh, Egyptians only. So it includes uh, those of uh, Coptic Egyptian descent, I will show you, and I think also modern Egyptians, I will show you soon enough. But from this, uh, don't worry, uh, we will be able to conclude at the end that uh, modern day Iranians are neither uh, mixed with uh, Saudi Arabians or uh, Europeans and that uh, there is at least 90% uh, genetic continuity between ancient and modern Iran, at least 90%, as high as 98%. So before I begin, I just want to explain this uh, timeline. So what you're, you've been looking at for the past few minutes, uh, past minute is this timeline. And basically it shows that different historical eras. So you have the Mesolithic, Neolithic, the Chalcolithic or the Copper Ages between uh, the 2000 years, uh, the last 2000 years shown here of the Neolithic and early 2000 years of the Bronze Age, but it's not included here. And then there's the Bronze Age, Iron Age, and then you have the Roman era and then the present age. I hope uh, this will clarify what I am discussing. So what you see here at the top right corner in the very red, the very red in the top right, it is basically the Neolithic Iranian population which originated in the Zagros mountain, the original native Iranian component and um, it later went on to influence the Indus Valley civilization as well as uh, to a lesser extent the Elamite civilization, the Elamite people. And uh, sorry, I didn't clarify. Yes, I said that right. It influenced the Indus Valley civilization, hence why modern-day South Asians have considerable uh, Neolithic Iranian ancestry, because these uh, uh, Neolithic Iranian people are actually mis mixed with the Australoid people of South Asia, and uh, they formed the Indus Valley civilization. So the Indus Valley civilization was not Australoid in origin, but rather uh, they were of uh, Neolithic Iranian descent mainly. So over time, uh, during the Chalcolithic, by the Chalcolithic or Copper Age era, they had mixed with the uh, uh, population in between, I guess, between the Levantine uh, Bronze Age as well as between, uh, the, well, between the Levantine Bronze Age and Neolithic uh, Anatolian populations. At the bottom uh, right corner in brown and uh, light brown, but not the lightest brown, that's uh, European uh, Neolithic populations which overlapped with the Anatolian Neolithic, but basically they mix with this population to form the Chalcolithic era Iranian population which is in the center of both of those as you can see, a bit more shifted to the Neolithic Iranians because they had more ancestry uh, from the Neolithic Iranians. 
then these uh, Chalcolithic uh, Iranian populations mixed with the Bronze Age steppe populations which arrived uh, with the Indo-European expansions you can see them in the sentence there in uh, the teal color and you can see that they sort of overlap with the Europeans but they are a bit uh, closer uh, still closer to Europeans than to Iranians but a bit more Iran shifted because of the fact that they were similar to Europeans, but they were not Europeans because they lacked uh, the native uh, Western hunter-gatherer uh, ancestry and the farmer ancestry which the Europeans picked up uh, when in when they were in Europe. But when they arrived to Asia, that wasn't there, so they mixed more with the Neolithic Iranian populations. Also, it should be noted that the Indo-European steppe populations themselves were a mixture of the Caucasus, Caucasus hunter-gatherers right there in uh, red, the two dots there in red, uh, and uh, they mixed with the uh, European uh, Eastern hunter-gatherers, which are right there in the light blue to the left and hence they produced these uh, steppe-like populations. So the steppe-like populations were indeed half Iran-like and they weren't pure Europeans as many assert but very distinct from modern day Europeans although a bit close but not significantly close that uh, they were exactly the same people as modern uh, Europeans. And then there as we can see in the pink that is the result of that mixture so it was a combination of uh, Iran Chalcolithic and the steppe populations but still significantly shifted towards the Iran Chalcolithic meaning that the steppe populations did not have a genetic significant genetic influence on the gen Iranian population and that there in the pink is the modern day Iranian population so you can see that is very distinct from the Arabs down there in the dark brown just the ones above the Levant uh, Bronze Age and it is also very distinct from Europeans right there to the uh, modern Europeans to the in gray to the left there in the center there you can see them uh, you can follow the charts at the bottom sorry about this I, it's a bit late but yeah the populations beside the pink outside of the pink are actually modern day Armenian and Georgian populations so you can see that they are actually very close uh, genetically to Iranians very very close actually especially the Armenians and these samples are from uh, most of them are actually from uh, the colored ones are from ancient Armenia the pinkish color ones and the actual uh, gray ones the gray circles there they're actually from uh, modern day Caucasus so you can see Iranians are clearly very similar to Caucasian populations and the one mark there in the X there is actually the only sample we have from uh, ancient Iran so from just before the Achaemenic period Achaemenic period just the early Iron Age Iranian you can see it right there marked with the X uh, it's originally pinkish uh, circle and uh, this sample actually had the haplogroup R1b but despite that it was closer to Iranians in uh, the vicinity of modern Iranians so this proves that actually uh, the Indo-European steppe population uh, influence had been already set in stone by the rise of the Achaemenid Empire and this is what many white nationalists debate but now we have ample genetic evidence to prove our point. In case you are wondering it is from around actually uh, 900 BCE so around 400 350 to 400 years before the rise of the Achaemenids and by this point the original migration had happened around 2000 BC to 1500 BCE so at this point uh, the Indo-Europeans were already well integrated into the Iranian population and were very Iran like and prior to this actually they had already mixed with the uh, Neolithic Iranians in Central Asia with the uh, BMAC civilization so they were already a very Iranized population genetically and they, they lost much of their original uh, Indo-European influence. Finally looking at this just looking back and this can debunk the notion that we are significantly mixed with Arabs as Arabs and uh, Egyptians as well are there in the dark brown and if we were even significantly mixed with them we wouldn't be in the pink spot but more so we would be more shifted towards them where they are uh, right there in the uh, brown spot but we're not you know we're uh, situated right behind beside our ancient ancestors and that shows that we're basically still uh, pretty much uh, the same uh, Iranic population without any either European or any uh, Arab influence as you can clearly see from this PCA.
So if anyone ever shows you in the future, or I mean uh, rather tells you that, hey Iranians, you guys are mixed with Arabs, uh, say no, you know, this is the proof. Show them this video because we now have genetic evidence and this PCA is actually from a geneticist, uh, Davidsky, who works for Eurogenes, which uh, itself is very Eurocentric, but acknowledges this fact that ancient and modern Iranians are basically the same people. And uh, even though I don't like his some of his Eurocentric uh, views, He's right though in this regard that uh, Iranians are basically the same people. So yeah, this is a very good video and I hope I hope this is a good video and I hope it will help you uh, understand the situation better. Sorry, I actually meant uh, Davidsky doesn't work for Eurogenes. He is rather a... Uh, he, Eurogenes is his own personal blog, but he is very professional and you can check his website out. I will link, I will link it in the description below. One final thing I will say is that the... Uh, uh, Indian, the minor Indian and the Turkic mixture I previously discussed had little to no influence on the Iranian population overall only accounting for 5 to 10 percent of the Iranian genome. For that reason it does not have an effect on the PCA. That is too uh, insignificant to have a significant event. So you can clearly see that Iranians on this PCA do not show any significant foreign influence and are largely the same population as ancient times, uh, the same people who built the Achaemenid Empire, who constructed great wonders and who were also behind the Sassanid Empire, all of this prior to Islam, obviously, behind Zoroastrianism as well as many other great ancient philosophies. Those great people were our ancestors, neither do they have anything to do with Arabs, do they have anything to do with the uh, Turks, and they don't even have anything to do with uh, the uh, uh, Europeans, you know, they can't claim our history because now we have genetic proof proving that we are their descendants. I didn't mention this, but... Uh, the uh, Iranian Iron Age sample was from Tape Hassan, which is in West Azerbaijan, and uh, where Kurds live today. And uh, uh, Kurds, as well as uh, uh, Azerbaijanis and Loris, are very close to that sample because of uh, regional variations, and they are the direct descendants of uh, the people who lived in that region thousands of years ago. That is actually why some Iranian populations are actually a bit, uh, a little bit distant away from that sample, but it's only due to regional uh, variations within Iran, due to regional variation. And if you are wondering uh, where the Tajiks cluster, well, in the light green, the very one, the closest to the steppe populations, those uh, are the Tajiks uh, from Tajikistan, and uh, then uh, the Tajiks from Afghanistan are also right there. And then above them, uh, to the right, the writer above and the writer you go, you get into the Pakistani population. Then above them, you have the North Indian. So they all cluster together there in the light green. And the Tajiks actually have more step admixture than uh, modern day Iranians, as uh, I believe Eastern Iranians in the past uh, did as well. So that's just there in case you were wondering how closely they are related to us. So that just about uh, sums up my video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and I will link the uh, Eurogenes uh, uh, link to the Eurogenes uh, PCA the, where I got the PCA from and if you need any more information please let me know and I will try to get uh, videos out as soon as I am a bit more free but this is just you know I thought this was in important information and I thought I would share it with you guys. Thank you for watching and uh, have a great day or night.